Hello and welcome to Bags of Action. My name is Steve and this is a five minute review of Mission Impossible Fallout from 2018. In some ways this film is a continuation of the previous film. Not only do we have all of the familiar returning faces including Tom Cruise, Ving Rhames, Simon Pegg, Rebecca Ferguson, Michelle Monaghan and Alec Baldwin but you also have Sean Harris returning as the villain Solomon Lane from the previous film. The film is directed by Christopher McQuarrie, who has worked with Tom Cruise on a number of films in the past, including the previous Mission Impossible film, as well as other things such as Jack Reacher, Edge of Tomorrow, the new Mummy film, and the forthcoming Top Gun Maverick. So, what is this film about? Solomon Lane has been arrested and taken into custody and he's been questioned by various international organisations who want information from him. However, the people that he hired still exist and without him in charge, a power vacuum has been created and now they are causing problems of their own without him. The IMF team are intending to go after these people. However, they are brought up short by Angela Bassett's character who works for the CIA and basically puts them in their place and says, you're a bunch of silly people walking around with masks. We need to do it the right way. So I'm going to send one of my people with you who's going to help you out to make sure you do it right. And this is a character played by Henry Cavill, who's called Walker. Whereas Ethan Hunt might be regarded as the scalpel, Walker is more the hammer. He's intended to come in and break everything apart and just get the job done. So the two of them have to work together to go after this secret person who nobody has ever really seen before, who's now taken over the operation now that Solomon Lane is out of the picture. Then we start to get in some really twisty, turny, complicated and slightly overcomplicated plot elements where Hunt has to go undercover, posing as this person, who then has to infiltrate another organisation, who then has to try and do a job and attempt to kill somebody, and on and on and on it goes. Now, I expected this kind of stuff with this film. It's part of the plot these days, compared to some of the older Mission Impossible films. So the pace is fairly relentless, the action scenes are incredible, the set pieces where they've filmed on location in France and in London and other parts of the world oral spectacular. You can see that Macquarie knows his business and working with a familiar set of actors he can create something that's visually extremely satisfying and really interesting. However, there were times when the film seemed to get a bit lost within its own mythology. It spent so much time building up this previous character that if you haven't seen the previous film you will be completely lost and not know what's going on because there's a story element to do with Michelle Monaghan's character, which I won't spoil if you've not seen the previous film, so that's quite important. There's also Rebecca Ferguson's character from the previous film. So really, this and the previous film are a pair that you have to kind of watch together, and I would suggest fairly close together as well, because otherwise you're likely to forget certain plot elements, such as Simon Pegg's character, Benji, wants to be out in the field more, and so we get to see him doing some of that instead of just being behind the computer being the on-site geek. If it sounds like I'm being harsh on this film, it's only because the previous ones have been so good and the quality of them has been excellent. Every time Tom Cruise pushes himself, you can see him doing the stunts and he does them as much as he's physically possible. For a guy in his 50s, he's impressive. There are some incredible scenes of him running and you know that it's Tom Cruise running full pelt out through parts of the city over rooftops jumping buildings, doing some parkour, and it all looks really good. It's completely seamless between him and the stunt doubles. Henry Cavill's character of Walker is a great addition to the team, and he has a very different approach to things compared to Ethan Hunt. He's definitely someone that comes across as very physically imposing and quite terrifying on purpose when you put him next to Cruz, who is obviously much smaller and more used to using his guile and intelligence. So when Hunt starts doing something completely off the book, Walker has to adapt and just make the best of the situation as he can. So it's interesting to have those two contrasting styles. I think the film is actually half an hour too long. It has a runtime of just under two and a half hours. And at times, even though I was enjoying the action, I felt that it sagged a little bit in the middle. You could have tightened it up a little, cut out some of the scenes that weren't really necessary and just got to the meat because it became a little bit too complicated, as I said, for its own good. 
Overall though, the film is really exciting. There's lots of action, great set pieces that is directed really well. The cast is fantastic, but it does seem to get a little bit lost. So because of all of that, I'm going to give it a solid four out of five and say, if you've seen it, let us know. Get in touch with us by all the usual methods and see if you think it's better or worse than the previous ones. If you like what we do on this channel, then don't forget to like and also subscribe.